If this is not your first time landing on my channel, you have heard me talk about daily decluttering before. Maybe you've done my 30 day challenge or watched pretty much any of my other organizational videos. I'm somebody who believes very strongly that decluttering is something you do a little bit every day as opposed to having to do these like once a year, big time over the top purges where your stuff just gets totally, like it's totally taken over your life. I like decluttering one little thing every single day to just try to stay on top of it. Listen, we all know that excess clutter is no good for us, right? It affects our everyday life it affects our productivity, and most importantly, it affects our mental health. So I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of things that you might be forgetting to declutter so that you can check them off your list. Item number one that you're forgetting to declutter is your socks. Socks are one of those things that I have like a personal vendetta. I don't know if vendetta is the right word. I have strong feelings about socks and them always being mismatched and never being able to find their pairs. So much so that I literally only own white socks and then a set of gray and black socks. Don't even get me started on kid socks. It took me a long time to find a set of toddler socks that only came in white. If all the socks are the same color and they're the same thing, you lose one, who cares? You can find another match. Anyways, that's just a little thing I've done to simplify my life is you got the one kind of sock and that's all you need. Every time that I do my laundry, I match up socks, which is easy, like I said, because most of my socks are the same. And if I ever get to the point where I somehow have a sock that doesn't match, um, I usually will keep it for like one laundry cycle. And if the other match doesn't come around again, I just get rid of it. In general, you need to declutter your socks. You need to be looking for any socks that you own that do not have a match. If the match does not come back around again, it is lost wherever it is that socks and bobby pins go to live out the rest of their life. Place number two that you are forgetting to declutter is above the fridge. What a beautiful place to just hide things. We actually are in the process of currently renovating our kitchen and in the new kitchen there will be no above the fridge because there's cabinetry. Um, and I'm very thankful because I am extremely guilty for just shoving all sorts of stuff above the fridge. It was my favorite hiding spot that I would put stuff and forget about it because the beautiful thing about a fridge, it's high enough they're like, you can't really see the top of it, you know? So you could put stuff back there and just forget about it forever. If you haven't checked the top of your fridge in a while, it's time to declutter it. Number three is your social media feed. We all end up following people for all sorts of different random reasons. Maybe they posted something funny one time or your friend shared it with you or you like met them at a conference six years ago. Somehow we're still following them. We are forced to be connected to so many people that we've just like met in passing at one time. And there's nothing wrong with that. In lots of ways, that's really, really great. But if there are people on your feed who are not contributing to your life in a positive way, the people who show up on your feed and you like kind of roll your eyes, they show up on your feed and it makes you feel not so great about yourself. They show up on your feed and they're just like constantly selling some product you don't want, whatever. You know who I'm talking about. The people that show up on your feed that don't match you. They have their audience, that's fine. But what I'm saying is you're not that audience. Get perch those people from your life, okay? You get to control who comes into your space and into your life through your social media feed. Like, why are you still allowing that person you met at a business conference five years ago and now that person is like, I don't know, a marathon runner and you don't, you have strong feelings against marathon running. I don't know, you know what I mean. My point is that there's not like anything wrong with marathon running or anything wrong with like somebody who's really into homeschooling or like essential oils or you know, what I do, organization. Maybe somebody started following me five years ago and now they're like, I don't want somebody telling me about getting organized and being productive, unfollow me. Like I don't, if that's not what you want in your feed, it's time to declutter those people, get them out of your space. Like I said, you get to control who comes into your space through your social media feed. And my little tip that I always remind people is if you're following people, maybe it's like a coworker or an old coworker, it'd be weird to unfollow them, you know? You can go to their profile and you can mute that person. You can mute stories and or posts. So this way you're not unfollowing them, but their stuff is not taken up real estate in your feed and thus in your mind. Number four is vitamins and like medicines. To me, vitamins and medicines tend to be like the spice cabinet. You know, like we all know about the spice cabinet, you sort of accumulate spices over the time. You like bought this one spice for this one dish 
and then like literally never need it again. I feel like vitamins and supplements can be like this. You might buy something one time for like one illness or cold or somebody told you it was really good and you love like some vitamin and you never stuck with it or whatever. Our medicine cabinets can definitely end up like this with lots of little odds and ends. The thing about vitamins and medicines is they expire and lots of times they expire probably sooner than you would think that they do. And a lot of them necessarily don't become like toxic when they expire, but they lose their potency. And if it's something that you bought and you're not sticking with it or you're not using it anymore, then it doesn't need to take re take up real estate in your like space. I shared with you guys in a recent video that I have recently made the switch over to Ritual for my multivitamins, who by the way, is cool enough to sponsor two days video. And I love it because it was just a really great like minimalism swap in my supplement vitamin area because I no longer need like multiple bottles to fulfill what I get for my Ritual multivitamin. It literally places like five different bottles. And one other item that has earned its place on my shelf is the new Rituals Symbiotic Plus. It's a three-in-one probiotic, prebiotic, and postbiotic. Now I'm someone who knows the importance of having good probiotics, especially since having babies. My gut health has become really important to me, but I also find that probiotics are one of those things that are just super confusing. So many things are labeled as like, we have probiotics, we have prebiotics we, and you're like kind of like what's the difference right like what's good what what do I need not to mention then you hear stuff and some people are like not all probiotics are created equal some of them aren't actually even doing anything they're not actually even getting into your gut and it's just really confusing like I just know that I want the probiotics and I don't want to have to become a nutritionalist in order to get them. Like I said, part of why I like rituals and multivitamins because I feel like it just took a lot of the guesswork out of a multivitamin for me. And I think the new Symbiotic Plus does that too. It takes the guesswork out of probiotics, prebiotics, postbiotics for me. And I just know that I'm getting high quality probiotic product um, to help me with my overall gut health. It takes up less space in my supplement vitamin uh, medicine area and so it really just streamlines everything for me I don't end up with extra clutter in this area because I've got my vitamin I got my symbiotic plus and that's essentially all that I really need to cover all of my bases all right the next item is books and books is a really hard one for me I don't know what it is about books but they feel so hard to part with I don't know why. And I'm somebody who has not gotten on the Kindle train yet. I probably should, um, but I tend to purchase most of my books and or like rent them or get them as hand-me-downs so I have physical books. But I really, lots of times once I've read books, don't often still need to keep them around. I'm not good about like consistently decluttering my books personally. Usually I let them pile up to a place of overwhelm and then I'm like, okay, I need to be getting rid of some of these books. So my rule for my like adult books is if I'm going to reference it later, I'll keep it. Otherwise I pass it on. But one category sort of inside of books that I feel like is really hard is kids books because these are books that you will read over and over and over again. It's not like you necessarily finish the story and they're like, okay, I don't need to read it again. Kids will read the same book over and over and over and over and over again until you've memorized it. You don't even need the book because you can read the book. That's how many times you've read it. Anyways, I digress. I have two huge Tupperwares of our kids' books that we keep in the basement. And then what I do is I usually rotate my kids' books out about six or seven times a year. I usually do it with the seasons. So like I just rotated his books for spring. I'll rotate for summer and then I'll do like the main holidays. So I'll do like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then I'll like rotate for winter books or so on. But every time I rotate the books, I try to keep them sort of organized. I have just like our general stories and then our stories that like fit into themes, like, you know, holiday books or whatever. And so every time I do a rotate, I try to take a look at the books and get rid of a handful of them to pass on. I either pass them on to friends that I have who have kids that are younger than mine, or like I said, I will donate them. There's lots of places you can donate kids books. They're always like in need. Next on our list is cleaning supplies. This is another one kind of like medicine and spice cabinet stuff. It just like slowly will accumulate. It's one of those ones that it just accumulates slowly so you don't realize it happens. You, you know, all of a sudden buy this like special oven cleaner and then you saw this other bleach cleaner that you needed for this like one thing and you end up with a lot of just odds and end type of cleaning products. And while I think there are some products that are like single use, uh, for example, I use the uh, Wyman's, Wenman's, Wyman's stainless steel wipes for our refrigerator, they're amazing. It's the best thing to use for stainless steel. All it really does is clean my stainless steel fridge and my dishwasher, 
but it's earned as keep as like a single use product. Otherwise I try to stick to multi-use purpose, multi-purpose products as much as I can, things that are going to clean multiple things for me, as opposed to something that's like, I can only clean marble or whatever, you know what I mean. Anyways, I'm not here to tell you what kind of cleaning products you should have, but what I will tell you is that you probably are forgetting to look under there and there's probably one or two bottles of random cleaning products that you bought that you don't need down there anymore. Oh, and probably also an old sponge that like was used one time and you don't know how it ended up down there. Next up is makeup and skincare. I'm actually really proud of myself because I've gotten very good about staying on top of my makeup and skincare lately. I've really been following a one thing in, one thing out rule with this um, area of my life. But I feel like with makeup and lots of times with skincare, we end up with products maybe we got a sample of it or somebody gifted it to us or we bought it, but we never really stuck with it and never really liked it. And it ends up sort of in our shelf and our makeup bag for a long time. Most beauty products tend to expire around the 12 month mark. You could always find how long a product is good for on the back. There's usually a sign that looks like a little like tube or a little bottle and it's gonna have a number with an M in there and that's gonna tell you how many months that thing is good for once you open it. Occasionally I've seen things that say 24 months but most of them are 6 to 12 months. Um, and if you got some lotion, used it a few times and you never stuck with it, you it's probably expired. Also, if you're not using it, it doesn't deserve to take up real estate in your home anyways. Next up is jewelry. And this one is really hard because jewelry doesn't take up a lot of space. It's super unassuming. It is easy to have 15 pairs of you know, earrings or like bracelets or necklaces, it takes up a very little amount of space. Even if you're not wearing them, like who cares? It's really not that much room. But it is worth it to take a look at your jewelry. And if there's anything you really haven't worn like a year, you probably don't need it unless it's something that's, you know, like a family heirloom or whatever. Take a look. You probably haven't thought to declutter that section in a while. Next up is the linen closet. I recently did a huge linen closet organization video and I realized I had so many pillowcases. Why? Why did I have so many pillowcases with no matching sheets? Also, like, am I ever gonna have an entire football team sleep here? Do I need 24 pillowcases? I don't. I just didn't need that many pillowcases. So take a look. We tend to end up with way more like sets of sheets or like towels than a normal human household needs. Take a quick look because that is a place that lots of us forget to declutter because it's an easy one in our mind to tell us like, oh, I just might need this. Like I just might have the entire cast of rent come sleep at my house one time. You're not gonna, you don't need that many. So take a quick look. Next up is food storage. This one is really simple. If you cannot find the matching top to the bottom, it's gotta go. Stop sticking it in there thinking that you're gonna find the top. You're not, you're not. if it's gone, it's gone. You know, eventually tops and bottoms of Tupperwares, they, they, they fall apart, they, they lose each other and it's just, you know, the circle of life. Last but not least is paper. We end up with so, so much paper. Why? You know, paper, for some reason when something's like printed down on paper, it just feels like it's important. You know, when something's a digital file, we're just like, oh, we can always find it. But when it's paper, something about that makes it feel like so one of a kind that you don't, you're like, oh my God, what if I lose this? Honda just sent me an offer to trade back my car for 5% of its value, like I better keep this in case I ever need to do that. I'll never be able to get this offer again without this piece of paper. Obviously I'm being sarcastic, but that is sort of what it is about paper. We are often he very hesitant to throw things away because we think that it, you know, once we throw it away, it's gone forever. Like poof, it's just, it was paper that's concrete. Once we throw the paper away, we're never gonna have it again. But the truth is most of us do not need to keep nearly as much paper as we do. Um, we just tend to sort of store it away because it is small, it doesn't take up a lot of space, and we think that we might need it. It's probably important because it's a piece of paper. I do have a video down below that I'll share about general like paper decluttering and staying on top of your paper organization. Um, but if you have any area that you know has accumulated a lot of paper or it's got some paper clutter, I have places like that still, even with my organizational systems that I have set up, and I find that when I do go through these areas of paper, usually I don't need 85% of it. Like, why did I keep it? I don't know. That one's maybe not even a forgetting to declutter. It's more like you're, a, you're ignoring it, you know? You just don't want it to exist, but it does, and it needs to be decluttered. All right, but that does it for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others, and I will see you all in my next video.